Hello, my name is Kara Nassardi, and I'm Training Director at EMDR Education and Training Center. And today I'd like to talk to you about the carbon monoxide metaphor. In doing so, we're going to talk about the problem, meaning the reason why we might need to use this, the truth, the psychoeducation pieces that we need to understand and sometimes share with our clients, and then the metaphor itself. So let's start with the problem. When I'm taking a comprehensive history, a psychosocial history of a client, I want to explore childhood experiences, right? I want to learn more about important elements such as their attachment organization, any dissociative coping mechanisms, and their past traumas. Part of this phase, which is phase one of EMDR therapy, also involves uncovering any adverse experiences that had the potential to negatively impact the client's current symptoms and their current level of functioning. And as EMDR therapists, we understand that these early experiences of childhood abuse and neglect often form the foundation of maladaptive memory networks and consequently often will become the starting points of, for EMDR reprocessing. Those are the first memories on our target lists. So during the course of treatment, at either the beginning stages during history taking or perhaps in later sessions involving reprocessing a past memory, clients are often surprised and sometimes feel embarrassed or feel shame by how much a seemingly minor incident has impacted their lives. They imagine, these clients, that trauma only comes in the form of big T traumas, right? That big trauma with a capital T, experience such as an assault, a critical incident, or an accident. And consequently, these same clients tend to ignore, dismiss, or underreport their history of small T events, such as moments of neglect, absence, or omission. So for example, rather than considering how they may have been negatively impacted by the fact that they were ignored most of their childhood, the client dismisses the omission by you know, using phrases such as, so many people have it worse, or I have no business complaining, at least I had food, clothes, and a roof over my head. So that kind of lays the foundation for the problem, the situation in which you might want to consider the carbon monoxide metaphor. So let's take a look at the truth, some of the education, psychoeducation that underwrites this, the use of this metaphor. So when our client offers these minimizations, such as so many people had it worse, or at least I had clothing and shelter, you know, those, those minimizations may well be accurate. Right. But as trauma therapists, we know that the optics and intensity of an experience aren't what qualifies an event as traumatic. Rather, it's the individual's internal experience coupled with that person's ability to make use of internal and external resources, both in the moment of the stressor as well as in its aftermath. And so this very personalized nature of the, infer, you know, the impact of adverse traumatic events or adverse events helps explain why for some individuals, exposure to a disturbing experience can really impact them dramatically, right? It can produce dramatic and enduring disruptions in their neurological, autonomic, immune, cognitive, emotional, and social functioning, right? We also know thanks to the work of Bowlby and colleagues on uh, attachment theory, what we know is that food, clothing, and shelter are really important for us, but they're just the beginning, right? They're only part of the developmental equation and that infants and children require consistent and predictable, emotionally responsive behavior from their caregivers. Behaviors that include physical affection, loving gestures, playful interactions, acceptance, emotional responsiveness, and mentalizations, right? A person's or a caregiver's ability to look at, their, at the kid and see what they're needing. So this brings us to the metaphor. To illustrate for clients the potentially harmful and pervasive impact of negative and um, negative experience, such as neglect and other small T traumas, especially when working with clients who are dismissive of their own experiences, I often employ the carbon monoxide metaphor because carbon monoxide is a gas that is colorless, odorless, tasteless, and slightly less dense than air, but it is equally flammable and poisonous. 
So if big T traumas, and this is where the metaphor comes in, if big T traumas are the proverbial five alarm fires, the ones that are easily identifiable and indisputably problematic and necessitating immediate uh, intervention, then these small T moments of neglect, absences, and omissions are like carbon monoxide gas. They're largely undetectable. And if present without detection and repair, are damaging at best and potentially lethal at worst. So this metaphor of connecting small T traumas to the dangers of carbon monoxide poisoning has really been helpful in um, assisting my clients in understanding the impact of what didn't happen yet should have in their past. And this insight often gives the client some sort of permission, if you will, to examine their history with a new perspective and in doing so, in taking a closer look at what happened to them in the past, um, they're able to see how past experiences may well have caused them harm and as such are definitely deserving of attention and treatment. So I hope that this carbon monoxide metaphor is useful to you and serves you in your process and enhances the work that you do with clients. To read a blog version of this video, you're um, invited to visit our website. And if you enjoyed this video, please do feel free to like, comment, or share it with others, as well as subscribe to our YouTube channel. And please do get in touch if you have any other questions or comments regarding this or any other EMDR-related item. We're always happy to engage. Thanks so much.